I mean, come on, how many times can I say poop in one sentence, right? Good morning, how are you? We are talking about poop today, and I know that that's a topic that a lot of people don't like to talk about because they find it uncomfortable to talk about, but it is an uncomfortable topic, right? So if you haven't pooped or can't poop or are pooping more than you wanna poop, I mean, come on, how many times can I say poop in one sentence, right? If you're uh, either pooping more than you wanna poop or are not pooping enough, then um, what, you know, what is it? What do, you, what do you do about that? If you're on the ketogenic lifestyle, ketogenic diet, then you sometimes have issues with that. Depending on uh, your personal body, your um, constitution, let's call it, your ability to change in your diet and your lifestyle and things like that. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit. If you have questions, be, be nice in the comments. Um, I'll try to answer your questions if you have them. Otherwise, we're going to talk about poop today. So it's pretty common for people on the ketogenic diet, like the, the hardcore ketogenic diet, hi Christine, um, to have constipation issues, right? So it's very common for constipation to be a problem, but it's also common for people to get diarrhea when they're doing a ketogenic lifestyle because guess what? Your gallbladder might not be working as well as you would like it to, or maybe you don't even have a gallbladder and your body is having trouble breaking down all of those extra fats, right? So if, if that's your issue, if you don't have a gallbladder, then you must, must take a digestive enzyme that has ox bile in it and probably some other things that help break down fats. And um, also keep in mind that if you're gonna start changing your diet to a drastic change, the best way to do that is going to be to do it slowly. <laughs> I love that, Christine. So you have to change your diet slowly. You cannot just wake up one morning and say, I'm going to eat six sticks of butter today. Your body cannot tolerate that drastic kind of change. It's just not possible. So if you are in the process of changing your diet, and I don't care what diet it is, you're getting ready to change your body into, you cannot just cold turkey just change because your body needs a little bit of time to adjust to the changes that you're making. So because we're talking about keto, keto typically increases fat content in your meals, right? Everybody gets more fat in their meals and a lot of people don't process fats very well. So the number one thing, it's number five on this list and it's a little bit blurry for you guys, so I can't really see it, but number five on the list is Take a digestive enzyme that helps break down fats. If you don't know what that is, you can ask me. You can ask um, your chiropractor. I saw one of my friends, Shaquila, is on here watching. She is an amazing doctor in the Chicago area, or I think that's where you are. Did you move? I'm having trouble remembering. Anyway, um, you need a digestive enzyme with ox bile in it, probably several other things as well. I won't get too, too technical on that, but ox bile should be part of the ingredients and things that help you break down fats like lipotropic factors. That's a, that's a $5 word for you. So um, getting that gallbladder working properly is definitely something that's important to do. So you need to change your diet slowly. Now you can stop eating carbohydrates rather quickly without causing too much upset in your system. But keep in mind that carbohydrates retain or cause your body to retain minerals. So if your body is used to having a whole bunch of carbohydrates on a daily basis and you suddenly stop eating carbohydrates, you're probably going to get a little bit dehydrated because your body's going to flush all the water that it's been storing, which honestly water in storage is not usable water, but you're going to lose a lot of electrolytes in that process. So if you suddenly change your diet by cutting out all of your carbs, you need to make sure that you're adding in electrolytes specifically. Oh yes, Chiquila, you're still in Chicago. That's awesome. So your, um, your body needs electrolytes, right? Calcium, magnesium, potassium, 
and calcium, magnesium, sodium. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. So anyway, potassium um, is super important on a ketogenic lifestyle. And in order to get enough potassium on a daily basis, you have to eat seven to 10 cups of greens a day. So like spinach and other leafy greens, kale, um, broccoli, those kinds of things to help keep your mineral contact up. Good morning, Holly. Um, so you have to keep your mineral content up. If you're gonna do a ketogenic lifestyle and you're gonna make it something sustainable that actually helps you lose weight or gain weight, whatever it is that you're trying to do, you must eat your veggies. Your grandmother was not wrong. You must eat your veggies and you need to eat ones that are low in carbohydrate and high in fiber, which is why I always talk about net carbs. So if you eat something that has 25 carbohydrates in it, but it has 15 fiber, that's only 10 net carbs. And guess how much spinach you can eat to reach that quantity? A lot. A cup of spinach is only like seven grams of carbs or something like that. But I digress. Um, yeah, Laura, most people don't want to use stool softeners long term um, because actually you want to get your body functioning the way it's supposed to without the outside use of other like stimulants and things like that. And a lot of times people end up using stimulants to increase their bowel function, which is really not a great idea. And it can be unpredictable if you've ever tried that. You end up in, um, in the bathroom and maybe you know sometimes in a bit of a rush because um, once the stimulant ones and ones that bring a lot of water in can cause sudden diarrhea, which you, nobody wants that. Nobody wants that at all. So the things that you must have in your lifestyle are probiotics and prebiotics. Prebiotics are things like inulin that actually feed the probiotics in your body. So you need probiotics and prebiotics to get your digestive system and your colon functioning properly. You also must have fiber. I just mentioned that but it's part of your vegetable stuff. So you have to get your fiber in there. And if you're on a ketogenic lifestyle, use net carbs and do that to get your fiber in every single day. And good news, fiber helps with constipation. Fiber also helps with diarrhea. If you get the right amount of fiber in your diet, it either absorbs water um, or out of what you drink and uses it to soften your stool, or it takes water out of your body to help harden your stool. So fiber is the great equalizer. If you're not getting good fiber in your diet, you need to. And psyllium husk is a great supplement, Laura, if you're interested in something that you can take. Psyllium husk is a great way to normalize that bowel function if you need something to normalize it without utilizing a drug. If you need some assistance on where to find a good psyllium to use for that particular process, let me know. Hey, Holly, I would say gas is probably related to a food sensitivity, most likely, or slow digestion. So your body's not processing the foods that you're eating in a timely manner. If that's the case, more um, digestive enzymes. Um, okay, so let's break this down for just a minute. So when you digest your food, so you eat something, it goes into your stomach, Digestion actually starts in the mouth. I need to do a whole video on this. Then it starts and then it happens again in the stomach and then it happens again in the small intestines. If you're not breaking your foods down properly, then it can cause a lot of gas and it can happen in any of those places. So I'll do a whole video on that, uh, maybe tomorrow and talk about the whole digestive process and why things happen that can cause things like gas and bloating where um, are not necessarily the same problem as constipation. So yes, you're welcome, Laura. I'm glad this is helping you. If this is something that you think other people need to hear, please share, please invite them to watch because I think this is a topic that nobody really talks about. And I wanted to make sure that it, I got it out there so you guys could feel comfortable talking about the problems that you might be having or the things that are happening in your life that maybe nobody is addressing those things. So we are up to, so we talked about probiotics and prebiotics. I touched on electrolytes briefly. You have to get your minerals in. You can get a lot of them from vegetables, but you can also take a mineral supplement. Make sure that it has potassium, calcium, sodium, and magnesium in it. Um, there are a lot of electrolyte supplements out there. Make sure they don't have sugar in them if you're gonna do that. 
Um, fiber, I already talked about fiber, and water. So when you're talking about balance, I know a lot of people say you have to drink half of your body weight in ounces of water every single day. Hi, Melissa. Um, hi, Lisa. So you want to make sure that you're getting your water in every single day. But you also have to be able to absorb the water that you're drinking. If you can't absorb it, then it's not doing you any good. So electrolytes help your water go where it's supposed to go. It keeps the balance inside of the cells and outside of the cells. The cells can't work properly if they don't have sodium and potassium. Sodium outside of the cell and potassium inside of the cell. It creates something called osmotic pressure. If the cells can't communicate because they don't have electrolytes, which is the conductive part of the cells, they can't communicate because they don't have electrolytes in them or around them, then the water can't get in and out. Nutrition can't get in and out. It's a whole another thing. I just think I came up with a whole another video to talk about right there. So anyway, just to keep this brief, I don't want to keep you guys on here for too long talking about poop, but if you're spending too much time in the bathroom, um, it's probably one of these things or a combination of the five. If you're drinking exogenous ketones, which a lot of people do now, it's getting to be pretty popular, or you're using something like MCT oil, keep in mind that ketones themselves, whether your body's making them or you're getting them from an outside source, ketones can be a little bit irritating to the intestines. So if you're getting them in too quickly, like if you take a whole bunch of MCT oil all at one time, some people like to use that to make them go to the bathroom, kind of like people use coffee sometimes. You, um, you have to be careful with that because if you go too fast, it can cause sudden diarrhea or maybe explosive diarrhea, depending on who you are and how your body deals with that. So MCT oil is an option, but it can sometimes cause problems. And it seems like the problems that are caused by having too much MCT oil all at once is... Um, an all day problem. Like once it starts, you can't stop it. But beta hydroxybutyrate, which is the main ingredient ingredient in most ketone products that you drink that are high in beta hydroxybutyrate, if you drink them too quickly, sometimes they can irritate the gut as well and cause a little bit of diarrhea. So if that's your issue, um, you just want to drink them a little bit slower. You want to make sure that you're getting fiber and probiotics and things like that into your life. Make sure you're getting your electrolytes. All of those things are super important to create balance. And um, I love drinking my ketones because I don't really like to follow a very strict diet. I call it easy keto, lazy keto, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it dirty keto. I don't eat a lot of carbs, but um, I don't eat a lot of fat either. I just use my ketones to help keep me in a state of ketosis and make me feel amazing because I love the energy that I get from being in a therapeutic state of ketosis. And hey, Julie, gosh, it's been a while since I saw you. So um, anyway, that's basically the thing. If you're interested in finding out more about this, just go back to the beginning and watch. I think we had some really good points. Thank you guys so much for participating and asking questions. I super, super, super appreciate you. And keep in mind, if you'd like to know how to get your hands on a 10-day experience, of the ketones that I absolutely love, which are in this cup right here. Um, send me a private message with the word poop talk in it, and I will tell you how to get $20 off of a 10 day experience and get you started for 2019 in a much better state. And um, thank you all so much for watching. I love you guys. And I super, super appreciate you being a part of the show, paying attention, asking questions, and responding. And please do share this with someone if you think it's something that they could use to help them feel better and have the energy that they need to do the things that they love to do with the people they love to do it with. I'm Dr. Annette, and I'm out. Have a great day.